This is Master Geo at Toy Fair 2017 with Sarah Farber and Brian Wilson. All right, could you tell me a little bit about your games, please? Sure. Our company is Galactic Sneeze, and we have two games on the market. We have Schmovie, the hilarious game of made-up movies, which is a family game for ages eight and up, and our brand new adult party game called Spank the Yeti, which is an irreverent party game for adults ages 17 and up that just came out in November. Okay, so what are the rules or the objectives of each of the games? Sure, so uh, the goalish movie is to come up with a funny title for a made-up movie, and each player wins a little squid trophy. It's like our answer to the Oscars. With the Oscars coming up, it's good timing for that. Uh, so each round, one player will win a little squid trophy for the funniest movie title that they have. Uh, it's all about creativ creativity and imagination and humor. You don't have to know details about that one movie, that one time. One of the really fun elements about Shmovie is that you kick it off by rolling a genre die, and there's six sides on there, so that tells you whether it's an action or horror, sci-fi or drama, or romantic comedy. Uh, and if you roll the question mark, you get to pick whatever genre you want, and people also uh, often pick uh, porn. So we found a way to work porn into a game that's still great for, you know, seven, eight-year-olds. Some people pick, you know, French documentary. Some people pick adult film. It's really yeah. up to whoever's playing. Then yeah. you flip over two cards. So let's say it's an, a drama about a, a smelly ninja or a constipated princess. And or then an all the action film about a mutant sandwich. Right. Yeah. And then everybody comes up with a funny title for what they would call a drama about a, a constipated princess. Uh, like uh, Crapunzel or... Um, the princess tried. <laughs> or the princess cried. Oh, the princess cried. Um, yeah. And then you, uh, you hand them all to the, the, the Shimovie producer or the judge. Or they uh, read them aloud, hilarity ensues, and then they pick a favorite and then gives them a little trophy. So it's uh, super fun. Um, you get to be creative and use your imagination. Um, and it's great because you can play it with kids. You don't actually have to have seen that many movies because you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be, uh, uh, you have to have seen a whole bunch of things to know, you know, what's a funny movie title, you know. It could be a parody of an actual film or it could be completely made up, which is nice. And so kids are so creative and, uh, you know, even if you haven't seen a lot of movies, you can still come up with something really funny. Yeah. It works great for grandmas and little kids, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you guys big movie buffs that you came up with? You know, uh, we do like movies a lot. Um, this game was in development about four years ago, and at the time, um, we were invent we were trying to write a screenplay, so uh, for a kids animated feature film. So we've read all these books on how to write a movie. Uh, our Galactic Sneeze. We like to think of it as a, a fun stuff think tank. So sometimes we invent toys, and sometimes we invent games. You know, kids shows. You know kind of all over the place. Whatever strikes at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So we were reading movies on, or books on how to write a movie, and at the same time trying to invent a game, and then it just kind of like mashed together into, into Shmovie. Um, we now host a Twitter hashtag game every Mondays at 11, that they're all like a Shmovie something. So like, uh, toy Shmovies. Um, like, Tickle Me Elmo's Fire. You know, like it would be some sort of goofy pun on a real movie. And those typically trend in the U.S. and the U.K. and Canada, and we'll get four to 5,000 titles um, every Monday. So um, we've learned a lot of movie titles over the last couple <laughs> of years. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Could you tell me a little about Spank the Yeti? Sure. So uh, Spank the Yeti uh, is our dirty adult party game. <laughs> it's the, uh, the party game of questionable decisions. And it's super simple to play. There are two decks of cards. One deck of cards is all the stuff you could do to somebody, positive or negative. And then one deck of cards is all the people or objects you could do something to. And it's easy. You take three out of both, right? So the example on the back is we've got uh, dumpster hump, joust, and eat the dingleberries of. Um, and then the other side we have a coked out unicorn, a robot that just wants to feel real feelings, and Tarzan. <laughs> so you put these three on the table, and you put these three on the table, and then the hairiest person goes first. <laughs> Normally that'd be, that me, would be me, but yeah, you get <laughs> And now we're all going to have to guess how you would mash them up. So I have to guess whether I think you would dumpster hump Tarzan, or do I think you would eat his dingleberries and dumpster hump the unicorn. Um, so it, You learn a lot about your friends and or family <laughs> and maybe your mother, depending on who you're doing game night with. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, super simple to play. It's a ton of fun. 
Uh, you sort of you, you lock in your predictions on how we think, say, you would do it, um, and then we go around the room and we flip them over and reveal them and explain why we think that you, you've chosen these, which gets funny really fast, and then finally you reveal yours and we find out who was right, who was wrong, and then you get a point for everyone you guess right. Okay. Um, so it's super simple. Um, and then to keep you honest, you get the same score as whoever gets the most, so that keeps you from choosing some like, wacky answer that uh, sort of is out of bounds. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So how would you win the game? Uh, so it's the first person to 15 points. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay. Yeah, it's super simple. You can either get one point, three points, or zero points in each round of the game. Okay. Yeah. Either get one of them right, all three of them right, or none at all. Yeah. Some people take it very seriously, but <laughs> most people are just like in there for having a good time, and they you get to 15 points, but you just kind of keep yeah. playing. Yeah. You know, you, I guess you could start over and play, mm -hmm. but okay. people generally just play it for a few hours. Okay. And uh, are these games currently available? I'm glad you asked. They are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, both of them are available uh, in retail, like all over Brooklyn. And then there's a hand, you know, then there's a bunch of stores, sort of mm -hmm. nationwide. We have a full list on our website. On our website, galacticsneeze.com. We're in about 40 retailers around the U.S. and then in Canada, a bunch as well. And then you can also find them on Think Geek and on Amazon. And um, they'll be rolling into some bigger stores. In the next few months as well. Yeah, it's still a secret, but we've had we've been picked up by um, some, larger some much larger retailers <laughs> uh, for the spring for for both games. So we're super excited about that. Yeah, I know you mentioned Think Geek. I, I'm pretty sure that's where I first heard about Spank the Yeti. Yeah, they they seem to be big fans, which is awesome. One of the fun things about this is uh, so we did a Kickstarter for this, um, and one of the um, stretch goals the stretch goals was having a glow in the dark box, which we reached. So um, you can't tell right now with this lighting, but the, the full splat here on the front uh, glows in the dark. <laughs> and uh, Think Geek was very excited about that. They made it, a, you know, their ad is like a glowing gif. Yeah, you it's very cool. Online. They've embraced that in all its geeky splendor. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so um, I think I kind of know the answer, but how did you come up with the title, Spank the Yeti? We were trying to come up with a combination of one of the actions and then one of the objects of the actions and we tried a bunch of different things and they either sounded too childlike like tickle the unicorn um, also, or too just like weirdly sexual you, um, you need something that you know when someone hears it like they'll remember it next time they hear it again and something that's going to stand out and any sort of like the crazy mix-up mash game just didn't seem to do it so once we figured out that we're going to take one word from the action category and one word from the object category, it really was just making a list of both of them and then trying to find the right category with like some good heart cave sounds right. and... Like Spank the Unicorn didn't sound as good as Spank the Yeti and, and it's Spank like, the Robot just sounded like maybe it'd be a high tech game or something. Like there are these connotations that start to come forward when you have certain words in there. And if you tell your buddy, hey, do you want to go to my house and play Let's Tickle the Unicorn? <laughs> he's like, I don't, I don't know. About know. That. So like Spank the Yeti felt like naughty but also a little aggressive but kinda in a cool. playful way but kind of cool. Mysterious because you don't really see the yeah. Yeti. Yeah. We found that, that Yetis now are, are on trend in a way that we didn't realize before. Like, yeah. And maybe that's everything. The moment you're working on something, you start seeing it you know, show up everywhere. But uh, Yetis apparently are extra cool now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's how we got to the name. It's just trial and error until we got to something that sounded good stuck. and stuck. Mm -hmm. And we had access to a Yeti suit. So. That helped, yeah. Sometimes you'll, you'll see a Yeti wandering around, which may or may not be... Um, him or the actual Yeti. We yeah. have a real Yeti. <laughs> we have a real Yeti. We, um, <laughs> early on, when we were launching this on Kickstarter, we sent, we put up flyers around our apartment, our, our neighborhood, to find a Yeti. Um, and then we thought we'd get, have like a bunch of them show up and we could interview them. But the first one that came was... Um, he was great. He was... He didn't talk much. He was kind of terrible. He smelled a lot. He smelled but he wouldn't really leave. Bad. So we were afraid that if he wouldn't leave and we invited more in, like there's a very real chance we'd have a house full of Yetis. So it's better just to take the one we had, even though he wasn't great. So now um, we have a house Yeti. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Our, our company, Galactus Knees, is three people. It's the two of us, and then we have a five-year-old uh, intern at home. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the Yeti also babysits when we're here yeah. at Toy Fair. Yeah. So that's it's a win-win, really. Well, it worked, because the title caught my, my attention immediately. So uh, any final words you'd like to tell? Play more games. Uh, yeah. Spank the Yeti. Spank the Yeti. Play uh, 
Why have movie night when you can have schmovie night? <laughs> really? It's obvious. Um, uh, call your mother. Yeah. But don't call her anything in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one of the funny stories is uh, when we were playtesting the game, we had mocked everything up on index cards, and we played with friends and at game nights and game stores, and we also played with family. And there was a time when we were playing with my parents, and my brother was there, and my mother asked, um, I think she had a card that said a Cleveland, uh, Cleveland Steamer. It was yes. give a Cleveland Steamer in Cleveland, too, was one of the actions. And she was trying to figure and out she, who she yeah, give And she was like, what's a Cleveland Steamer? And How can Brian, I know whether yeah. to give it to Jeff Goldblum yeah, exactly. or <laughs> Donald Trump or, or somebody else? Or a squirrel if I don't know who's all up in your business. Yeah. And Brian went to explain it to her, and my brother like reached across the table and was like, do not explain to my mother what a Cleveland Steamer is. <laughs> I do not want to be in the room like, yeah, when you explain. Do not go there. So we decided but, uh, that just Mort, like her husband, would just show her later. Yeah, yeah. We're like, Dad will just show you later, Mom. Don't worry about it. So, uh, But yeah, Mom approved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. And uh, once again, where could they find all this information online? If you go to galacticsneeze.com, we have more about each game, plus a list of stores where they're available. Uh, and there's a fantastic, so we made a how-to video, oh, right. how to play Spank the Eddie. So there's a little animated uh, myself and Sarah mm -hmm. and then our, our buddy. Uh, so you can, it's like cool. two, three minutes long, and you can watch us playing, and uh, it's pretty funny. One additional thing that's available on our website as well. Oh, yeah. is in Spank the Yeti. Each round, one person is what we call the Yeti, the person who everyone's trying to guess what they would do. And one fun thing we made is Brian made a pa little paper toy Yeti that you can download from the website and fold and pa paste together yourself. And then you can actually keep that in the game to mark whose turn it is. So you can have an actual Yeti to spank or to play with There's also at your a table. <laughs> a free downloadable PDF, uh, like a a print and play demo of Spank the Yeti as well. Do you want to try it out? So if somebody wants to try it out uh, before uh, diving in for the full Spank. All right. Lots yeah. of stuff. Lots of stuff. <laughs> well, thank you. You're, both of the games sound awesome. And thank you for your time. Thank, thank, thank you very much. much. Thanks very much. Bye. <laughs>